Steph Churchill, the marketing manager of Dawn's Appliances, and I am here with the chef Anthony Marino. If you guys joined us in our last segment, we were talking about how to achieve the rotisserie taste when you don't have a rotisserie at home. So chef is now going to talk to us about some of his favorite foods to rotisserie. Everything under the sun can be rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it all in. No, but um, guys, we think about a lot of the meats and things like that. Classically, it would be your roasted chicken, your duck, you know, all the poultry. But you know, you could even do you know some chicken legs or some wings, things like that. Or you know, you could upgrade. I do a rack of lamb, a leg of lamb in there. You know, cooking times vary. You know, between different proteins and things like that. But you know, a leg of lamb, bigger hunks of meat kind of work better. I've even gone as far as like, I love the gyros, so I know who doesn't, but I put the gyro cone in there and I've shaved the gyro meat, or they call it a shawarma, which is like, you know, a really thin sliced chicken, pork, or beef marinated overnight. And you know, they put layers of that in between onion, peppers, and then, you know, some vegetable or fruit. So they pack that all together super tight and then they roast it and shave it down you know in your like uh, kebab setting and things like that so that's fun too but there's a whole other side for you know vegetarians and non-meat eaters I mean pineapple can be on there I've used roasted melon I've done a whole watermelon which was insane wow. and great too you know I've just rotisserie the watermelon slice it down put it on a cool salad with some feta or like a vinaigrette so I mean Think about it, if you're going to invest in the rotisserie, you know, use all your options. I mean, make make a three-course meal out of your ro rotisserie just with different, you know, with different options of fruit and vegetables. I mean, even zucchinis and squash work out well, too. So. Mm -hmm. so, Chef, give us a quick recap. You know, a lot of people um, may not have the accessory function in their wall oven, or they might not have, you know, the countertop rotisserie standalone unit. So, for those people we talked about in our last segment, how do you get that taste? that brownness and the texture of rotisserie when you don't have those accessories? Great question, guys. Let's cover it again. We're going to use the convection roast setting as we're going to use that broiler element. We're going to use the convection fan. We're going to use the bottom bake element. But the key terms here, we need a heavy gauge sheet pan or, or broiling pan on the bottom, but we need a rack to sit inside of it. So, you know, a lot of them come in a set, like a roasting pan set. You've seen them. You know, but we do need that airflow on the bottom to kind of cover the whole piece of protein or vegetable that we're using. So it gets constant airflow. So that means it crisps on the bottom and it crisps on the top. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds amazing. And you were talking about, you know, of course you can rotisserie your meats. I feel like that's what most people think about when they think about rotisserie mm -hmm. is those, you know, delicious chickens that like mm -hmm. Samsung, uh, Samsung, <laughs> Sam's or Costco sells. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, you're talking about produce. Mm -hmm. So what exactly, I mean, when you're rotisserieing produce, does it get that browned um, color and the same texture that meat would. So it's great. You know, it, you have to um, you have to do a little implementing to achieve that. So you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, a lot of the fruits like pineapple things like that have a high sugar content. But you know, we don't, might have to season it appropriately. Like for that, I'll make a rub of like sugar, a little bit of chili powder. You know, just to really kind of help that natural sugar caramelize. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're gonna add a few things too. And you know, the rotisserie actually, you could make a full meal out of that. I mean, I know we were talking about, you know, the chicken and things like that before, but you know, that roasting pan at the bottom is gonna catch all those juices and all that flavor. I've put like roasted vegetables on the bottom of it, like root vegetables, like carrots, mm. turnips, things like that. And maybe, you know, diced up potatoes because they're gonna roast as well and they're gonna get that flavor, you know, that drips down from the rotisserie. So, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, I want chicken and carrots and potatoes like a roast, you're gonna do it all in there and it's gonna be your full meal. Even with, you know, the pineapple and things like that, think about doing your pineapple in there but putting a pan in there with like some rice or, you know, some rice and some apples and some liquid and, and really, you know, bake your rice in there and make a pineapple rice or, you know, in, add some shrimp to it and really make a kind of full Caribbean dish, you know. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, once you start, once you get the bases down, I mean, the possibilities are endless. And I like customers using the whole appliance for a whole meal. 
So you're not really, so you invested the whole thing in there. You don't have to go here, do this, go here, do that. You know, it's a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are great things to keep in mind, especially right now as everyone is cooking from home. I know I'm getting really tired of eating the same basic sauteed chicken dishes, so I might just have to try some of this. That's it. Everybody got to jump on the rotisserie setting, you know what I mean? Jump on the rotisserie bandwagon here at Don's Appliances. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we talked about um, in our last segment, too, we kind of just skimmed over the fact that a lot of grills have a rotisserie accessory. Mm -hmm. And I know one of your favorite rotisserie items are chicken wings. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit how you would prep that and make mm -hmm. that on a grill. So even with the chicken, the grill is an outstanding one because everybody likes the grill, you know, especially these grills nowadays, they come with all these great options. So, you know, why not, you know, not just smoke, not just grill, but now rotisserie. So, I actually like to do it, so the, the chicken wings I like to keep nice and dry first. So we pat them dry to get all that water, all that moisture on. And then we want to really hit them with like a nice rub. So I always do, like I said, I always try and balance the rub as sweet, salty, and then something else. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But sometimes I just like throw some stuff together. I'll be real honest, <laughs> and it turns out, you know what I I've mean? I've tried your rubs, <laughs> yeah. they, they always turn out. <laughs> they turn out well, you know what I mean? So. But, you know, and sometimes I like to just coat them with some mustard to get, like, a good crust on them, too. That's another, like, really, if you get a good mustard, like a grain mustard or something like that, just coat your chicken wings in the mustard. I know it sounds weird, but it works out really well because the mustard has, you know, some acidity. It has some good flavorings, you know, and maybe, like, a little bit of uh, kind of adherence so it sticks to that. And then I like to cover it in the rub and then, you know, really just... Place it on there and, and you know, take your time with that. Those tines are sharp. Everything's, you know, a little bit cumbersome, I like to say, you know. So take your time, put it on there right. Especially with the wings, you want to put them on each of the four tines so you balance out that because it's going to rotate and we're going to get that flavor. And, you know, try not to put your grill, I know it's hard to say, but like in a super windy place because everybody like wants to put their grill somewhere you know try and pick it in a in a, in a low airflow zone mm -hmm. so the infrared heat can do its job right and rotisserie well. right and i know one of the reasons aside from the taste that people like to ro use the rotisserie method is because it um the cooking time isn't as long so if you're if you're using you know convection roast can you talk to us about the amount of time it takes and mm -hmm. the, the temperature, generally speaking, we should be using? Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to be using like the around the 25 and 25 rule. So we're going to probably, if we were going to do it at 450, we're probably going to jump it down to 425. And it's probably going to be 15 to 20 minutes per pound per protein. Okay? Mm -hmm. Things like that. And let's be real honest, everybody loves the rotisserie. It's a showstopper. <laughs> everybody <laughs> likes to see that you know finished product like you said. You know, nice, caramelized, you know, great rotisserie flavor and, you know, really juicy inside. Yeah, well that all sounds amazing and thank you all for listening today. Um, thank you for joining us. We of course went over the rotisserie cooking method and how to get rotisserie flavored foods using your oven's convection roast setting. Um, we would be happy to answer any of your questions if you want to stop into one of our nine Pittsburgh locations, or um, you could always chat with us virtually on dawnsappliances.com. All right, yeah, and check out our blog, guys, and you know all of our rotisserie settings, they're up on YouTube. Enjoy. <laughs>